In between working on the last minute Christmas PC build, I was able to get another gift into the production queue last minute, and that was converting a laptop from an internal hard drive at 7200 RPM to a solid state drive. And this is because I hate to see computers that function perfectly fine kind of be thrown out or used less or whatever just because one component that's replaceable is failing. So we're gonna talk about how that fixed a lot of problems including noise in this video. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by AMD and the RX 480 and 470 GPUs which are on the table and you can find links to sales for those in the description below. But if you're not using something like a DGPU to build an actual desktop computer, you might be using a laptop. And this is where we've done a few videos recently. One of them was working on GN's Andrew's laptop where it had some pretty severe dust problems, if you recall. We were able to improve the thermals by, I don't even remember, it was like almost 30C in some cases, but it was a big improvement and that improved our frequency uh, and it removed some bottlenecks in the system that were caused by thermals. Overall, fixed a lot of problems like freezing as well. So that's an instance where a laptop that works well, the silicon was all fine, is being killed by something that is resolvable through some effort. In this case, it was even easier because I didn't even have to pull the whole thing apart and clean it, but uh, I did a bit of cleaning, cleaned out the fan. And the reason I started there was because when you have a laptop that's making a lot of noise, you generally think, well, it's probably the fan. So I went through the process of pulling it apart, looking at the fan, what's going on, and it looked clean. So the next process is, well, maybe it needs to be relubricated or needs something to freshen itself up, replace the fan, maybe it's just bad bearings. None of those seem to be the problem. And after some heuristic checking of putting my ear against the shell, we were able to figure out that it was the hard drive. The hard drive was spinning up to such a high RPM, basically it's max 7200 RPM at all times, including from desktop, that it was uh, working unnecessarily hard. It was producing a bit of extra heat, which of course increases the fan speed a little bit too, and uh, just generally was obviously on the way out. So this is not a drive that was long for this world. It's been put away in permanent storage in a, a Faraday cage. But other than that, the obvious next step was replacing it. So for a laptop, it makes sense to do an SSD upgrade or side grade, uh, depending on what you have in there now. And that's because of a few reasons, some that you don't think of on desktops. Normally, of course, everyone thinks of speed as the biggest improvement. But not only that, you get some power savings. So uh, an SSD, some of them draw less than a watt of power, depending on if you're using SEROIX or other advanced uh, sleep and C states, SSD power savings in Windows 10, for instance or even I think Windows 8.1 had it. But if you're using stuff like that, you get power savings and the drive is not a physical spinning component, less risk of damage by just throwing the laptop around in bags. And it's quieter. And that noise in a laptop is a lot more noticeable than in a desktop with other fans and system components. So that's what we were working on. The first step was to clone the drive. You can do that by using software like Clonezilla and uh, you can also use Acronis and you can, which is paid software, you can use Norton Ghost, which is one of the solutions that I used to use and liked a lot over network. You could do Pixie Boots to Ghost and then just clone it to everything from the network somewhere. So that's really cool. Uh, and there's a couple other free options too. Clonezilla is one of the better ones, but it does have some issues. So I ended up using Acronis, went through, it's a, I think a $30 buy these days. Went through and upgraded it, did the clone, no problems whatsoever, Windows survived. I left BIOS set up as legacy because trying to go to UEFI after you've already installed it is not ideal. Set up as H AHCI, so everything was good. No real issues there. There was one blue screen issue at the very beginning and that was resolved by uh, going through and doing a check disk. So sometimes, well, pretty much every time I've ever done a clone for a functional in-use real system as opposed to a test bench, you'll want to do a check disk just to make sure everything's where it should be. So that fixed that problem. In terms of improvements for this, I grabbed a UV400 drive, Kingston drive, it was on sale. 240 gigabyte SSD to replace something like a uh, 480 maybe, gigabyte hard drive, something like that. And that drive was barely being used, so that was a fine option. And we did see gains in a few areas. One of them was reducing the boot time, so that went down from a little over a minute to about 27 seconds. That's a much quicker boot up, of course, and applications feel snappier in addition to that change, but we can't really measure that easily. 
And that's a clear benefit on the experiential and usability side of things where things just kind of open faster and it feels better, but you can't necessarily measure or quantify the difference. As for the rest, the noise levels for the original system put us at about 49.1 dBA when under prolonged idle periods without any load whatsoever. And that's almost entirely disk noise with some fan noise thrown in because things were heating up unnecessarily. With the SSD, we're down to 34.3 dBA and that's idle. With a 36.3 dBA average heavy loads, that's when the system's really working about as hard as it'll ever work, which is for things like uh, Excel spreadsheets, PC mark benchmarks, things like that. And then in a bursted worst case scenario that should really never occur, we hit 43.4 dBA when the fans were really ramping up for short periods of time to deal with the heat. And that is not something we'll really encounter, but if we did, it's still lower than the idle noise with the original hard drive and the louder fans pre-cleaning and things like that. So that's really all there is to this video. The whole point is that if you've got an old laptop, because we just did another one of these with dust, it's really worth pulling it apart and trying to fix things piece by piece if possible. If there's not a silicon level failure with the CPU or the GPU, then normally the fixes are trivial. It's cleaning out dust. I, I should say trivial with air quotes because it's trivial once you get to the part that's a problem. It might be difficult to get there. There are service manuals you can look up online for pretty much any laptop. Type in the name of the laptop and the word service manual and that'll tell you exactly how to disassemble it. That's the hardest part. Once you're in there, pull out all the dust, uh, maybe relube the bearings and the fans if it seems like it's necessary. If it's been spinning against dust for a while, it tends to get hot. And then drives, of course, hard drives are pretty common failure points in laptops primarily because they move around a lot and that's not good for a spinning disk. So you can get an SSD, throw that in there, of course, that's not news to anyone. But if the point of, uh, of prevention from doing something like that was that you didn't want to migrate your OS or you didn't know how, the answer is very easy. You can install Clonezilla to a USB key, plug it into a functional system, ideally not the unit you're working on. Uh, there are some pretty severe issues with Acronis and with Clonezilla when trying to work from the local machine. So if you have an internal laptop drive and you have an external drive plugged in to a USB 3 dongle, or even you move it internal and you try to boot to a USB key with Clonezilla or Acronis, I've very rarely had success with that. It's just something with the way the laptops are set up it does not like. But if you plug it into a functional desktop, really no problems whatsoever. You don't even have to leave the booted environment. You don't have to go into a special USB key environment or save mode or anything like that. It works perfectly fine from the desktop with the application installed. Uh, so Acronis is an option if you want a paid solution. It's a bit easier to walk through, but Clonezilla is not hard. It's just, it looks more intimidating because it's got menus uh, that are arrowed to access it's all uh, Linux distro basically that's been stripped down and changed into just a very simple disk cloning and semi-partition management software. Uh, Parted Magic is, is also pretty good to look into. So I think hopefully that gives everyone a basic idea of how you can make these changes if you wanted to. Pretty simple content overall, but uh, I, was, I was very interested to see a noise reduction from almost 50 dB to something like 43. That's pretty substantial. And 36 when it's under a more uh, a nominal load. It's something like uh, working with YouTube. We're at 36 dBA. So that's pretty damn good and was exciting to work on and is part of why I like working on computers because you can measure the results and see them in real time when it does work. You can watch our last minute Christmas build one and two if you want to see some of the process of doing that troubleshooting live. And as always, Patreon link to the post show video helps out directly links in the description below for more information, including the links to these cards. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.